Um, my name is Mike McLaughlin. Let me grab one thing from over here real quick. And then I want to do a quick survey. So um, we're going to talk about um, cloud framework integration. So myself and when you each have roughly a 10 minute demo, <laughs> and we have five minutes left. <clears throat> so um, what I want to do is, is, is real quick just give you a, a, an idea of what we're going to talk about and then ask you to pick between A or B and then we'll queue that up so you can at least see one of them today. <coughs> so when we look at the, 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 cloud fra the, the cloud and the cloud framework, and I know this is an oversimplification here, but we kind of break it down into what I call the soft parts, the, the software, the, the, the software defined things, and the hard parts, the physical things, the things that actually have to be in there to drive the cloud. All right, and we see this, this sort of delineation in the frameworks as well between sort of the network, compute, and storage layer and the things above it. All right, and if you look at the, the, the arrows here, and I'm, <coughs> I apologize for being a little confusing, there's really two distinct roles. There's cloud administrators that are responsible for managing that whole ecosystem of things, and then there's the users that are trying to use the cloud to get to their applications. That's the key thing they want to do, but they also want to have some access into this, this cloud infrastructure to do things that the cloud is helping them automate, like build new servers and, and do things that the administrators are setting up the functionality for them. All right. So if we look at what, from a storage perspective, down on the, the physical side, um, you could certainly manage the storage from the storage interface. And the Nimble UI or the Nimble CLI could be used to manage the storage. You could manage the storage through something like the virtual center integration. All right. You probably wouldn't manage it through directly through the compute layer, and that's why the dashed line is in there. Or what we wanted to show you today was managing Nimble Storage through some of the orchestration or automation capabilities in cloud frameworks. All right. And that's that sort of thick blue line right in the middle there. All right. So what we have here today are basically an, an opportunity to look at our integration with uh, the Cisco UCS Director or the OpenStack. Uh, cloud framework. Like I said, each of those is about a five to ten minute walkthrough and for sake of time what I'd like to do is just kind of give the, the audience the choice of which one of those would be most interesting or, or, or that you'd like to see today. So anyone who wants to see UCS Director, quick show of hands. All right, one, OpenStack. All right, so I, <laughs> I guess that kind of defines it. So that's going to be when and he probably will, will sneak some other stuff in here as well. All right. Thanks for the vote, and I guess I guess I'm the winner. <laughs> UCS Director is a native plugin. The bet is not, um, you had to add on. To correct. Uh, is, uh, yeah, yeah. A quick update on what we are doing with UCS Director. So we got the Cinder driver incorporated into the Juno release, which went GA last month, and we do support Ice House as well. So customers can log into Infosight, get the driver, update the configuration files, and off they go. So what I have up and running here is the Juno release, the built-in driver. And I was going to show both the admin view as well as the end consumer view. And given the time constraint, I'm going to stick with the end user as that's more exciting. Okay. So what I do here first is I'll go into OpenStack and create a user. You're about to get me UCS demo instead. Okay, so what, this is what administrators see and what they have control to, to aggregate resources, create policies in terms of what end users can consume across the entire OpenStack back cloud. And what I would do here as an admin is, I'm not gonna go through the whole UI, but I will show you how I go and create a user. Actually, you know what? I created one for myself. I'm gonna log in as myself first, as the consumer of this self-service cloud. So as soon as I log in, I see an overview of the resource obligations that I have. Okay, so how many virtual machines I can spin up, how much resource I can consume, and the compute side, on the store side, capacity allocation, number of VMs and, and such. So as you can see, I haven't done anything yet. So think of a scenario where we have developers in the environment where they have to build new versions of software. They certainly would like to orchestrate creation of virtual machines at times to help them write new code and also push that code to the, the ops team as well as the QA team for testing. Okay, so I'm gonna emulate that scenario here. So instances is in the fancy term for virtual machines in OpenStack and public cloud world. So instance analogous to virtual machine. I have no virtual machines running. So if I want a virtual machine, I can just go in here and say, this is my new build as of today. 
and how many VMs I want. So with OpenStack, we have what we call the Glance Image Repository. That's the central repository for virtual machine images, all right, cloud images or ISO images where you could deploy as the template of the virtual machine. With Cinder integration, we work directly with Glance Image Repository, meaning when customers want to boot their virtual machines from Nimble directly, they have the ability to do so by choosing a specific image of choice. And what we do underneath the scene is to copy the image into a Cinder volume that's provisioned by Nimble and allow them to boot the virtual machine. So I'm gonna do exactly that. And then I'll select one of the Linux virtual machines that I could log into. And then OpenStack gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of a SSH key that you could use for passwordless login and also network that is orchestrated and assigned to me that I have privileges to connect to by the administrator, okay? And I'm not gonna do anything fancy here just to create a virtual machine. Okay, so this looks simple on, in, on the horizon wheel, which is the self-service portal OpenStack. But behind the scene, what this does in the back end is OpenStack Glance repository will copy the image block by block into the Nimble volume backing this specific virtual machine. Okay, so it looks like it's done. So this, this is waiting for the virtual machine to allow us to log in. And I'll show you, it actually creates a Cinder volume. Okay, so this is a volume that's offloaded to create on the Nimble side and then attached to this particular virtual machine. Okay. And then while we wait for this prompt to be ready for us, uh, I'll just highlight we are very fortunate to work with Yahoo Japan before we even release any official support for OpenStack. Back in the Havana release, which was two releases back, we were closely engaged with Yahoo Japan, the engineering manager for the private cloud at Yahoo, to understand how they use OpenStack and how we could plug into their platform using Cinder integration. So a lot of times they give us a lot of valuable feedback on what needs to be done to provide value to them in this private cloud that they built. So a lot of those feedback we have incorporated into the integration that we have to market with a press release that Gavin mentioned earlier. And in terms of contributing to the community, we are very aware of the contribution that we have to make to the community as a whole, since this whole OpenStack Foundation is all about user collaboration and co contribution. So a lot of what we learn, we do share with the community. And in fact, my partner in crime, Jay Wang, who's the architect in engineering for OpenStack, he's actually flying back from Paris, attending OpenStack Summit, sharing with other developers what we have learned from Yahoo Japan. And one of the use cases I'll demo here exactly. So let me log on as a developer and be productive, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna write some awesome code. Give me hello world. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is fancy awesome. programming. <laughs> Some original code. Okay, so I'm very productive with my virtual machine, and now I'm ready for my resource commit, right? I'm ready for QA teams to do some massive testing on my code. I'm ready for the ops team to stage this before production. So I'm gonna, what I would do is something very fancy here, which is to create a snapshot, meaning I wanna capture this state of a virtual machine to share with other teams, okay? So I'll call it snap for QA. And again, that's done. We're not copying from block storage to object storage for snapshot. We simply offload that to Nimble to create a redirect on write snapshot, okay? So all of that is transparent to the users. Like Mike said, the infrastructure layer should be transparent and as abstracted away from the end users, okay? So in the image, I automatically get this image that I created as a snapshot in the previous step. So when the QA team log in here, I can say launch and I call it, I'm the QA guy. So build 1107, okay, let's say I want five of these copies, okay, to do massive testing. And that's it, okay. So in the UI, it looks like it's creating five virtual machines and underneath the cover, we are leveraging Cinder integration to offload the cloning of these virtual machines into the array. So there's no copy in the blocks. So let's say your image is 
40, 40 gigs or 100 gig, five of these will equate to 200 gig or 500 gig of additional space you have to allocate. But to us, those are just metadata pointers in our file system. Okay, you get a full copy of a clone without taking up the additional space and without incurring the overhead of copying. Okay, so it looks like these guys are done. Okay, so I have five copies of these guys. And these are real virtual machines that is getting ready to be logged onto. And we also discovered from one of our customers that is using us for OpenStack environment. So they have various Tomcat and Couchbase type applications that they package into these images and they leverage chef recipes to copy binaries. As these virtual machines get spun up, the binaries get copied through chef server into them. Let's say a web server, you need these binaries, these scripts, okay? So what they have done is pretty clever. They told us about this, we never knew about it, is they prep these images 90% of the way just before they get the identity, as well as just before they run that executable or that script to kick off a web server. So what that does is it saves them time, right, when they have to clone many instances, all those scale the environment. Let's say a web server needs another 100 of these instances. I don't have to wait 15 minutes for each time a virtual machine needs to be booted up to get the recipe and the binaries from the chef server, okay? So all they do is give it an identity and start that script, okay? Within a second, they get a new virtual machine, okay? So uh, I'm gonna log in and, and let's hope my awesome uh, hello world is in there. So there we go. So another copy. So all of these are real. Okay. So they all have. Didn't run it. He just. Yeah. He yeah. just. Yeah. <laughs> what a wuss. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> so typically, the, <laughs> so typically how I would do it is I create an SSH key and yeah, then yeah, yeah. associate it and then SSH. Libraries and all that stuff. For purpose yeah, yeah. of demo, I'll pursue it. All everything <laughs> being active here, and essentially that's it. And. We are deploying OpenStack internally here at VMware. I mean, at, at Nimble Storage. And we do plan to show the world what we are architecting in the form of a blueprint. So how we design the environment, how we lay out the design considerations. And in fact, we started our first South Bay OpenStack user group meetup here. And huh? we're starting another one in Los Angeles in December. So we want to spread the knowledge that we gather from our customer interaction, as well as what we learned internally deploying this private cloud backed by OpenStack. Okay, so that's it from my part. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I promised I will show you the, um, the Nimble storage VVOLs hands-on. If you guys are interested, talk to me offline. Uh, all you do is uh, Nimble Storage University and go in here. Nimble Storage University. Yeah, we'll, we, we can give you a logon, and then you can log in here. The Vivol's hands-on lab is there, five modules. You can register VP, create snapshots, create clones. So you get to see how we integrate with Vivol's. And any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Any OpenStack. Yeah. OpenStack, yes. Did you say you'd started a local OpenStack user group here? Yes, uh, for, the, for the South Bay area. Yeah. Um, so we plan to expand that across regions by spreading knowledge and we're doing some internal training so that can scale. And my partner in crime and myself don't have to fly out to all the different regions as much as we love to. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah um, so, so that's it. Um, any questions?